Good evening everyone, this is uh, Stephen Yana and it's not a chat. We are, you know, know our <laughs> yes, we are very tired, it is very late after a Tennessee conference and we have here with us very special ladies that I just had to bring uh, to us here to the hotel and uh, they want to speak their testimony, we want to present their testimony yeah. to you. And the reason is that we get Stephen so many letters and when we go around conferences people come to us to pray for them because it's either a son, daughter, grandson, brother, sister in a family that uh, has a sin of homosexuality and people are wondering Steve if God can if Jesus can deliver these people, is there any hope? Well, you know, the thing is, one of the biggest problems that I have seen in all the years in ministry is a lot of ministers teach that homosexuality is a, it's, it's the curse. It's the dreaded disease uh, that there's no hope for. And if you're in this type of situation that, you know, you're lost. I mean, it's like uh, ministers literally make it look as if you're damned. Uh, uh, and for me, as I've stated many times before, like even in the case of Israel, you know, what, what Netanyahu is allowed to happen in Israel with the gay parades in Jerusalem, things like that, is completely wrong. But we've also made a, di a distinction, a difference between the fact that these people have chosen to live this life the way they've chosen it, that, but they're still human beings. Right. And every, it doesn't matter what the sin is, there's no difference if a person's involved in homosexuality than that of a man that's committing adultery. Uh, and whether it be physical adultery against his wife, his marriage vows, or whether he is uh, merely just thinking it in his mind. Lasting after. Because Jesus said, a man that looks upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Right, and we but have here two sisters yes. in Christ now. Uh, one that is have had a, an amazing testimony. Right, Valerie and Kathy, and they were delivered of sin of homosexuality, and that is a wonderful testimony that I want you to be encouraged, all of you that wanted us to pray for your family members, that there is hope in Christ Jesus, and there is absolutely nothing that Jesus cannot do. He Amen. can do it all. He can deliver from any kind of sin, and here is the proof. Welcome. Did you know I got to ask her the question? Did yes. you know they were coming? No, that was such a surprise because we met in Pennsylvania. We yeah. really yeah. wanted yeah. to be able to interview you guys when we were in Pennsylvania. Yes, but we ran out of time. Yes. Yeah, it, the, yeah, the time it was yes. a big issue because right. Yana told me she tells me the testimony afterwards. And yes. I, was, I was just in awe. We talked about yes. it until late that night. Yes. And because honestly, I have never myself known of anybody that has had that type of testimony. I remember having one like friend that. that went through this his whole life and he really loved the Lord, but he was felt so bound. Mm -hmm. And he felt like he could not break free, but he still lived as, as the best he could, you know? Yeah. And I wished I'd known some of the things I know now that yeah. maybe could have been more of a help to him then. And you know, Valerie and Cassie have their own ministry to LGBT community now. So yeah. it's time to put their attention on that. Yes, we want I you will to, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we want you to hear their testimony and be encouraged that Jesus can deliver anyone from yeah. any Absolutely. sin. Okay, Valerie, Cassie, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Thanks for having us. It's so who wants to start from what happened in your life? How did it all happen, this deliverance from homosexuality? Well, we were, um, we were noticed things around us were changing and everything. We were becoming more, I'd say, spiritually aware. And so we just started searching in the Bible. You know, we started reading the Bible you know, watching some shows and stuff like that. And matter of fact, your show was one of the shows that we had started watching. And can you, I'm sorry for uh, interrupting, but can you tell uh, the audience or the listeners, uh, you two were about to get married. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, we, were, yeah. we were about to get married. And um, 
God had been drawing us for like a while, um, and it was like a gradual waking up. We were were waking up to like what I don't like to use the word conspiracy, but you know what I mean to things that were going on. We were waking up to that, and um, gay marriage had been legal for you know a couple of years. You know, um, we just never. And, and we've been together in a, in a homosexual relationship since 2008. Got a home so, together and everything. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, everything, yeah. you know, really. Kids and, together and everything But we else. never took that step, even when it was legal, to to get married. And then, um, we, I guess I was probably the one who brought it up and said, you know, we should, you know, we should just, you know, get, get married. And so we... <laughs> So and we were reading the Bible. We were we, we were, so actually, were we were starting to see Jesus. Yes. Yeah, we yeah, were yeah, actually we, believing Jesus existed. We actually believed that you know we were having somewhat of a walk with him and stuff like that. We prayed, and you know we were really coming to the Bible. We we quit very new though, very very yeah. very new. And and I was raised Roman Catholic, and I have to say that that was like. I almost think that's almost like what you talk about being under the law because for me it was so dead. Like I, I looked at it as as almost like a burden. Do you know what I mean? And um, it just, it just, I never had a relationship with you know. You, you went, you you did this ritualistic type of of like worship, and it was. Talmudic Christianity. Yes. yes, yeah, it was, and, and it was right. very, very dead. Yeah. So I, like, it was never anything. And I had, from, you know, becoming an adult, I just, you know, went away from that. And then, of course, you know, when you're in your, your sin, it, well, it says, you know, when you're in your sin, that it just kind of like you're blinded. It, it serves your conscience to things. So and how, that how did you defend your lifestyle, reading scriptures? Uh, did you go to any church that promoted it? No, or? actually we didn't yeah. go to a church or anything, but we were searching, we were really, really searching for an answer and stuff, and we've been to the gay prides. Um, matter of fact, we've been in some of the gay pride parades, we were like, like a big like, hit. Yeah, a big hit, like yeah. Toronto gay, uh, gay pride, like we yeah, had New our, York. we had our like, you know, our uh, slingshot vehicle there, and yeah, we were featured on the front DC. page of of yeah. Columbus, of, of their pride, you know, and they had an article where they talked about us in it, you know, so yeah. we were like a big, a big, like, you know, I guess we were, um, PR big you know, pretty, I yeah, PR big pride, big I, pride so now you know. Jesus delivered you out of yes. how did yes. that happen? How? Okay, so, so yeah, let me get, let me get a little more concise here, so we had planned on, on getting married, but there was this feeling and I can't really describe it but there was this feeling inside of me and I'm sure you you had the same yeah, so I was wondering like, if it was there right. was this this feeling inside me that was just like just like really like not so sure about this yeah I mean I don't want to go yeah. with the like it was just a very almost a doomish kind of feeling a very um, a very heavy feeling about it so um we and we had searching. tried to understand in the scriptures, but you know, the LGBT community really twists things. They really twisted things. And and really the thing bad. is, I'm a fairly logical person. I have a master's degree. I'm, I'm no, I mean, I'm not a genius by any means, but I'm probably not, not a pushover. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, they made really good arguments. So I could see on both sides, like, good arguments. and and. But we, we couldn't talk find things. really where it was wrong either in the Bible. We couldn't see it. Well, they, yeah, because we, we, we were blinded. living, yeah. we were living in our sin, you know. Because a lot of people say, "Well, the Bible's right there, and why didn't you open up the Bible and read it?" We were opening the Bible. We were really searching, but people don't understand that have eyes to see, ears to hear. You know, we were blind. We were blind. Well, you know, it. you take the we scripture about understand it. about Ruth and Naomi. The scripture about Ruth and Naomi, where you go, I will go. Where you're buried, I'll be buried. Well, guess what? The oh, LGBT yeah. community says, "Look, they're, that's they're just like 
they were they were gay. They were together in a relationship. They said they were having a relationship. It's the same thing about Jonathan and David. And, and yes, and yeah, that's another one. Yes, that's yeah. another one too. Because some of the friends that I had years ago, yeah. they would tell me about these things. Yeah. Yes, so and that would be things. their defense because yeah. I would try to witness to them as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was very. This confusing. is the, this is the enemy taking scripture and twisting it to twist tickle the air, you know, so yes, that it yes. says what people wanted to hear, but we didn't want to just hear what people had to say. We wanted to really, really know what God had to say about it, what the scripture At had to say point, about yes. it. At this point, yes. At the and, point we were going to get married, we yeah. really wanted to know because I I had a very un, uneasy feeling about yeah. it don't really want to totally talk about what I do but I deal with people and their feelings and stuff so I'm tuned into it to feel, and I had a very uneasy feel you know about it so I know I retreated into myself and I just really I just really started exhorting God to just you know imploring him about it. yeah I just asking him just saying you know please make this clear for me let me know what I because I was really like, I don't want to do this if it's, I just kind of really was starting to get convicted, you know, about it. Um, I can't say if there's any We couldn't say it was reason, right and we couldn't know. say it was wrong, but we just, we didn't know what it was. You and know, I and don't I know why like I was God was talking convicted. to us, but we didn't know exactly, you know, it was kind of like me in there. But she was praying that God would, you know, tell her, yes. you know, Show me where you know whether it be in scripture or whatever. Show show me you know if this is right or make wrong. it clear. I and, was and I was, I was like, praying the same thing, but we didn't pray that together. And we weren't talking about it. It was almost like we were afraid. Like uh oh, what if it's? Do you know what I mean? We wanted to know, but then like, uh oh, what if it's it's true? It was a very it was a very deeply personal kind of kind of thing to be at that point where you're like. Okay, so we made a life together. Yeah. Do you well, know, um, I was the lover of her life. She was the love of my life. We built a house, you know, we had a house together and property and, you know, everything we own, we owned together. In Pen Pennsylvania, yes. 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 when we spoke, um, you said something happened to you and within a few days something happened yes. to you and yeah. you didn't know about I know. each oh, other happening yeah. this. You yeah. even cried. Yeah, yes, and, and it so gets me every time because um, it's it's very um, emotional. I, it, it is. What listen? Um, what God did was just. I mean, it was yeah. amazing. Can you? I went. Yeah. Yeah, I went down to. Um, we we didn't get our license in Pennsylvania. We got our license in Maryland. In Maryland, I'll make this very clear because we have people say, "Well, you don't get this or whatever," but you get a certificate and a license at the same time. at the same time and the officiate you know fills that out and then you, you send everything back in so you get that at the same time so only one of us had to go to get this that's and, another point people say well and, that's not true yeah we didn't but. both have to be present to go mm -hmm. to go pick this up so i left that day you know she's like you know I, we made plans and we already had a date set that we were going to you know get married and uh, so I left, and I it was like a you know 25 minute drive to go get it. And I'm driving in my truck, and I'm I'm really speaking with God, and God is, and and, and I keep on hearing uh, it had to be the Holy Spirit, God, it had to be the Holy Spirit saying, you know, this is really happening, this is real. I'm like, yeah, you know, I know it's really happening, and I know it's really real, but you know, I'm like, and I just poured my heart out to Him, and I said, Lord, I said. I said, if this is not of you, if you don't, if, if this is, if we're not supposed to do this, please show me, tell me. I didn't care how he tell me. I, you know, I didn't know if it would be in scripture or whatever, but I was crying out to him to just, you know, tell me, tell me, show me. Because I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to cross over that line if it was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, she'd been praying, I'd been praying, we both had been searching, but neither one of us had been we talking, weren't talking about to it each other about to it. each other. And so um, I went down there and um, picked up the certificate and um, 
it, I, it, when I was going, when I went down there and everything, it was kind of zoomy and stuff. And I went up the steps, and there were guards there, security guards there. I had to go in, and I had to see the lady and give her all the information and everything. And she was uh, printing out the. She was really nice and everything, and she was printing out the certificate. And uh, she she says, ouch, and I was like, what? And I kind of looked over the counter and I thought she stapled her finger or something. And she didn't, and, and I said, I said, well, what happened? And she, she's like, um, she says, I uh, cut my finger on your certificate, on your rare certificate. And there was blood coming off of her finger. And she said, that's the first time that's ever happened. That worked here for a very long time. So she'd been working there for over 20, 25 years or something like that. And when that happened, I was like, you know, I just took a really deep breath. And I was like, okay, God, is this, this, is this of you? This is of you. You're, you know, you're, you're telling me that this, you're telling me something's wrong with this. So she put it in a manila envelope and uh, uh, and handed it to me and I was kind of like <laughs> I was kind of like you know like, oh my gosh and so when um, I had it and I I started out the steps and um, as I went down the steps I looked down and at the bottom of the steps there's a wing there was a bird wing and it was laying down at the bottom of the steps and it was a white bird wing and it still had like the flesh on it. And I did a double take out and I looked at it again and then all of a sudden this feeling came over me. It was like just uh, like, um, dread. I felt, yeah, dread. I felt pale, you know, all of a sudden and it just came over me and, it, and I felt that it was God telling me, you're not to do this. You're not to get married. I even went back inside and told the security guards that there was a, <laughs> a bird's wing down there and it, and it looked like a dove's wing. And I went in there and told them, they were like, oh, all right, you know, or whatever. And so then I left and I went home and I didn't say anything to her about this. I didn't take a picture of the certificate and say, hey, look at this, you know, celebrating or anything. I went home, I put it on the table and I didn't say anything to her about it at all. And um, I just left it and we, uh, sometimes live pretty busy lives mm -hmm. and so we didn't even get a chance to talk for a few days later and she had um, come home. Yeah, we were just kind of walking around the certificate almost like it was... Yeah, um, neither one of us like... said anything about it. It just laid on the table and we just kind of would glance at it when we would walk by it and everything and we never said anything about it. So now, uh, you know, the weekend's coming up and we're getting all our... Um, our Lord bought us out and our books and everything else, getting ready to sit down and study and everything. And I'm already sitting there, and she comes over to s sit down and um, next to me, and she says, she looks at me and she says, um, I said, we, we need to talk, you know? Um, and what had happened in the meantime, you know, within this period, like I said, we didn't know. I just... I just had this very, very uneasy, like, dready feeling about it. And even as far as us, we never, like, we celebrated our lifestyle. Like, I said, they featured us in <laughs> things, you know. Um, we, you know, we had just been getting drawn. I don't, I don't know how to put it any other way. You know, God was, was drawing us. We were listening to him. You know, because it, it wasn't anything I'd ever even really... You know, I had arguments or whatever for, for people before. I told you we tried to understand the Bible. But I really, I also was just really imploring God. You know, just, I didn't, I would have never even cared before, but something was changing inside of me that I can't, like, I can't even really articulate it. She you know? would read the Bible and she would cry. <laughs> You know, yeah. I just, it just, and and let me also say that I never, like, read the Bible before all this, like, really ever in my life. When I say really ever, I mean, like, never, ever in my life. Um, Especially being a Catholic girl. <laughs> right. No, yeah, you didn't do that. You just had a priest who told yes. you what to think. That's um, right. So I, I never did. So it really was a, a work that was happening. So I was really asking God, you know, just... I don't, I didn't know how, and I didn't even know if it would, because my experience of ever talking to God as a child was that there was a brick wall there, probably because of all the ritualistic deadness, you know, but um, 
I, I went to sleep one night and I had a dream. And just let me say that, you know, I've had dreams throughout my life. We all have. I've had dreams that I could barely remember. I've had dreams that I could vivid, you know, could pretty vividly remember. But I've never in my life before this had a dream that I knew was from was from God. Or that I even had an even an inkling of a thought, hey, this could be from God. That right. never right. ever happened to me. So I went to sleep one night and I had a dream that we were we were getting married. We were at a um, you know, courthouse. Um, didn't recognize the courthouse, but we were at a courthouse. There were three other couples besides us getting married. And I was like, it was kind of strange because it was, I was there, but I wasn't there. Do you know what I mean? Like not, I, understand what I, you're I was saying. there kind of physically, but not really physically. And I was witnessing the, like the heartfelt, the internal, like spiritual, I guess you could say, emotional celebration of each of these couples as they were, as they were going up to their moments of being joined together in, in marriage. And I witnessed that for each of these three couples. And there was just such, so, there was such a celebratory, you know, mood in kind of like spirit, which is weird because I wouldn't have, I didn't even think really in terms of spirit, you know, but that's now how I would probably describe it. And then it came time for us. And it was, I never knew the word dirge before, but it was like a funeral. I mean, there was like, there was like, it was a mourning, a mournful tone that like, it was, <laughs> I, I don't know how else to describe it. It was just And that like, was your dream. That was yeah. my dream. And I, and at the point where we were supposed to go through it, there was this, just like, there was just this feeling of abject, utter, absolute mourning that was piercing, you know, for us. And I woke up and I sat straight up in bed. I sat straight up in bed, and I'm imagining she didn't tell me. my it's eyes were as, dreams my happen. eyes were, come as, right out of it. Were, were as big as saucers, and I I remember like I don't even know if I said it out loud. I think that I did. I said, "Oh, okay, God, I I I hear yeah. you. I I hear you, but I also said." But I don't know how to tell Valerie this. And, You're going to have to tell Valerie funny because thing I don't is, know how to tell I said this. the same thing after I got in my truck to go back home after I got the certificate and I saw all, you know, everything. All signs. Yeah, yes. you know, and, and I got in the truck and I was like, Lord, I said, I threw it up on the dash. I said, You're going to, you really need to tell Kathy. you got, you got to tell Kathy. And so we both had prayed the same thing after, you know, this had happened to us. But when we both sat down to open up our Bibles, and she was getting ready to sit down, and she said, she says, I don't feel like we're supposed to get married, you know, and I, I had a dream, and I said, well, you tell me about your dream, and I'll tell you about what happened to me. And when, when we sat down and we shared uh, each other's story, she shared hers and I shared mine, after I shared my story with her, and we looked at each other, others and, other in the eye, and we just said, we're not to do this and we just it, it was like the Holy Spirit came upon us and we both said at the same time we are to stay pure and be the bride of Christ we are the bride of Christ well and let and me say it was, was just there was repentance we, though, too, we repented that, um, right then it was <laughs> and, and let me oh, say yeah. too with repentance that I don't know what people think about it but like my repentance and hers too was like I was a weeping, sobbing <laughs> puddle on she was like the floor. The tears were just because out of her I was so I was so convicted. Do you know what I mean? Of yeah, of remorse. my wrongdoing that I I felt how I grieved our Lord. I felt that. Wow. Wow. You know, yeah. I felt that and um and actually when I did get deliverance and I did get actually delivered from the I'm gonna just call it what it is the demon of homosexuality and I got delivered from it and when I got delivered 
I had a vision and I saw I was there was a real struggle they don't call it deliverance the same way when you give birth to a child there's a struggle there's a struggle to deliver a, like a spiritual affliction you're trying to translate something from physical or spiritual into physical through the physical if that makes sense it does make and sense. and there's a very a very real like psychological physical struggle that goes on there and the people who were doing the deliverance, you know, were saying, you know, come out in the name of Jesus Christ, just like they did, you know, in the Bible. And um, that struggle, you know, was, was there. And I felt things, too. I mean, I felt like I was getting choked, you know, um, yes. like choked. And they were, they were kind of encouraging me to just, like, confess out my sins. And when I was confessing out you know my sins I had a vision of like when my sins came out of my mouth they became nails that pierced the, the pierced you know the, that put our Savior on the cross and and in that moment I was also that's when my deliverance you know ended so it was it was extremely um, you know powerful and my repentance was uh, I, I I felt how bad you know my sins were you know and um, I don't know why why God you know why Jesus did for us what he did for us but I can tell you that I'm eternally eternally grateful for it and there isn't a day you know we don't belong to a church we don't go to a church but I can tell you that every single day are the church. Well, yes. We are the church and every yes. single day, you know, all I can say to you guys is life, our lives are not the same anymore. We don't we, really belong to us anymore. And that maybe sounds home. like, I don't know, but it, it's like that, like life is, um, we truly were delivered, you know, there's a lot of people that will say to us things like, oh my God, oh, well, you should have nothing to do with each other and you shouldn't be around each other or anything. We were truly delivered from homosexuality, from the demon of homosexuality. Let me tell you, because our, uh, I would say, perverted sight of each other, it has completely, it's gone. It's gone. It's, gone. it's changed. It we, see so each other, we see each other as delivered. There is nothing yeah. left. You know, nothing it's like left. the life that we, we had see each before. other as sisters in Christ. Isn't, it just isn't the same and in, you in serve our days. others who yeah, we, we are do. in yes. LGBT community. Yeah. Yes. Anybody, that, would reach to out. Jesus. Anybody yeah. that reaches out to us, we we um, we are in the ministry of deliverance. Uh, we we disciple. Um, we baptize. Uh, baptize. We counsel in terms of like helping people understand because there is you, you have to understand repentance and even to get deliverance you have to you have to understand your sin. Do you know what I mean? To get deliverance, because you can't be delivered from your friends. You know what's interesting about this, because early on when we first talked about this, we made the statement that sin is sin, and the, the sin of homosexuality is, is in Leviticus chapter 18, just like all the other sins yeah. are in there. Yeah, All right. inside. And, 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 and I'll, have to, I'll say this, and especially for men that are watching this, that are listening in, there's no difference for men over the same thing when these sisters talk about deliverance. The lust spirit is the exact same thing. Yeah. And I told my wife, you know, of course, my deliverance had came long before I married my wife and everything, but you literally have to have, I even call it a revelation, it takes a revelation within you to know Absolutely. that you're not bound to that spirit any longer. That's right. Yes. No. Yes. And, yes. And, and, the and truth we, will set you free. That's right. Yes. And so, that, you know, when people, that so many, they look down on homosexuality as if, this is the worst taboo right, that could like possibly be. It's something be. you can never be delivered from. But, you know, but, but you've got you know, every you know type what? of lust spirit out there, and it's really, what is a homosexuality starts with a lust spirit. That right. Or it could yes. start with women because they've been abused by some man or something like that. And yep. then that has opened a door for that. There's well, a there's a lust spirit that exists, but also there's a lying spirit. 
divine spirit that tells you that you cannot be delivered. From yes, they're two. Oh, and wow. we found that. And we found that, that in, the, in the, yes, you know? we found that in the ministry of deliverance that you have a less spirit, but then you have a lying spirit that even afterwards will come after you a little whisper. bit and say you weren't really delivered. Yeah, the serpent wants to whisper in your ear. Yes, but we yes. are to take every thought captive. Yes, and only that one thing too that I have tried to counsel other men about is the fact that you know you're not bound. Satan doesn't have you unless you allow yourself to be You know what it's you know that's right. You know what yeah. Stephen it's about belief. Whatever you believe. Listen, we are saved by faith. by grace through that's right. faith. When we what? Believe. So the thing is is when you believe and one of the revelations, and I've gotten tons of them from you know the Lord since since we were saved. One of the revelations I got was that when we believe the lies of the enemy, that is the worst form of idolatry because we are exalting them as wow, truth amen. That's and right. calling, calling God a liar and saying, Satan, I believe your words are true, and God, you're a liar. Yeah. Not, so um, not believing in God's word is actually yeah, absolutely. Sin. So the thing is, is is it's really helped me to fine tune. God's really done a lot to help me know His voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit, versus the voice of the enemy. And and before I was saved, I struggled like everyone else with to sin or not to sin. Now, now the conflict in my head is to obey or not obey. Exactly. It's different. It's completely different. It was about sinning before. Now it's about being obedient to what to what the Holy Spirit is telling, is, is speaking yes. to me, whether it's to, to talk to someone. And, and you know, we, we do that. There'll be someone that, like, I'll see someone twice, and I'll hear, talk to them about Jesus, and I'll give them. And yeah. I'll say, yeah. do you know Jesus? Um, and that, Be and obedient I, to our Heavenly Father's yes, absolutely. voice. He speaks to us and everything. And, and I've had situations, we, we got shirts that said, when in doubt, cast it out, you know, like a <laughs> ticket people. And on the back, there was a picture of someone. Conversation like, piece. Yeah, conversation <laughs> piece. So I was traveling, and I, I went into, we stopped at a rest stop, and I, and I went in to, to use the restroom. And as I was coming out, I heard a voice in my head say, I wonder what people think that means when you say it. And I was like, hmm. And, and it was, it really got me pondering that question and we got back in the in the vehicle I, I even talked about it a couple hours later we stopped at another rest stop I went in I got in this line where there was this um, this younger man and he looked at my shirt and he, and he cocked his head to the side and says when in doubt cast it out what's that mean and it was like boom I I knew exactly I said well do you believe in demons so do you believe in God? And and it just went into then, because there's all kinds of gods everybody are believing in, other Jesus and everything else. But what about Jesus Christ? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? And he said, he said, well, Jesus, he said, I think he sat in front of me in a, in a geography class. It was a very odd response. But um, I said to him, I said, well, I said, I only recently started getting to know him. You know, you could do that too. And that was the end of the conversation, but like, Open the Holy seeds. Spirit yeah. told me exactly the situation I was going to have. And I don't know if that sounds weird, but those are the kind of things that happen yeah. to us now. Not only that, um, like um, our neighbor that lives near us, we live on three acres. We, we live out in the country, and, um, you know, God's really blessed us with a big property, a huge house and everything and stuff. So, I mean, it, it's just, it's wonderful, but... Our neighbor that lives down below that we bought the house from, um, uh, he is a street preacher. And after selling, yeah, street preacher day. Yep. And he, after he sold the house to us back in 2008, about a year after that, he became a Christian. And so it's been a very interesting. And I would stop every once in a while and talk to him. I talked to him about God and everything like that and stuff. And he would always pray for us. <laughs> he was like, "Lord, open her eyes and her ears," you know. But um, but it's it's really good now because now we have we are you know become uh, 
brothers and sisters in Christ and everything. He opened, he just, in the town that we live in, he just opened up a, a prayer center downtown. And so we're trying to help him out with that and everything. And uh, he, he got to see a deliverance the other day that we were able to participate in with, at his center and everything. So it was good. But I can remember when we were at a, um, at a Pride in D.C. and he was there and he was street preaching and not very really, nicely either not nicely <laughs> yeah dave was not preaching nicely his he, he, he was very rough and it was not a message of love it, it, it's not going to work yeah right, it's not going to work but he place. well we went we were there just the other night and we sat there and he he looked at us and he said he said i want to apologize to you he said i am sorry I'm sorry if I offended you. He said, I'm, I'm really sorry if I, you know, said things that offend you and everything. He says, God's done the work on me. You know, he's been working on me and, and, and softening me and everything. And, you know, he, he, he apologized yeah, and everything. Good. So he, he now will preach. I mean, our God is merciful. Our God is graceful, but our God is righteous at the same time. Yes, and there is, and there is, there is going to be a judgment for our sins. So, I don't want to get on that camp of, of Jesus is love and there's no condemnation because that isn't that isn't true. Yeah. But you, we, what I learned from my deliverance is, and, and even the whole situation is that I can't convict you of your sin or you, and you can't convict me because neither one of us are Jesus Christ. That's right. So the Holy Spirit is the conviction. Yeah. So the thing is, is that our job is to witness the gospel right. to people. And through hearing the gospel, that Faith begins comes the by process. Hearing. Yes, that yes. begins the process. And so all I can say is, is thank you very much to everybody who was praying for us because I know people had to yeah. been because what happened was not of our own. Yeah, and be of our patient. Own volition. Be somewhat right. patient with people because truly, when we were in our sin, we were looking for the answer. We we were sort of seeking in the Bible. We were actually reading the Bible and everything. And after. We were sitting in those chairs and we looked at each other and we had tears coming out of our eyes and we, we realized that we are the body of Christ and we repented right then and there and everything. Opened up the Bible in the book of Romans. We turned to the page where it actually said that it was that homosexuality was a sin, that a man is not to lie with a man and a woman is not to be with a woman and, and everything. And we actually could read it and I actually read it and I was like, look, it's right here. There before it's right here. I said, we, I see it now. I see it now. When we couldn't see it before. You know, you know what you both have that most people don't realize when it comes to this? The scripture speaks about because they would not receive the love of the truth. And he was talking about Israel at the time. Mm -hmm. He'd give them up to the uncleanliness. Yes. A man with a man, a woman with a woman. But see, what did you both have? You had the key ingredient. You had the desire to want to know yes. the truth. We yes. really, really wanted to know the truth. You know, and the things that, I'll just say this, the things that God showed us, the things that God showed us with what he showed me yes. is that um, for, on my behalf what he showed me was that if with the blood coming from her finger the cut that was done we got married and we were making a blood covenant and then when I went down the steps and I saw the dove wing which I perceived it as being a dove wing it was a verge wing that's for sure and it was there um, he said that there would be no peace in that marriage if we got married. Mm. And then with hers, and, and of course, it was it, this was going to be a spiritual death. Yes. So we have a blood covenant leading to no peace and ultimately spiritual death. That's how this. That's what the whole. That's what he told us. <laughs> told us with this. That's what Basically. he showed. You know, I think this is amazing testimony <laughs> with tremendous hope because. We have been getting letters there is hope. from people to pray for different kind of family members. And, you know, it's hard for me because I don't understand homosexuality. Right. I, I just, so I didn't, I didn't know how to help them other than I am going to pray. I know Jesus can deliver. 
but then I'm praying, I'm getting these letters, and even last year here, last year here in uh, Tennessee, there was a sister that came after conference to me, mm -hmm. and she cried, and right there we prayed for her grandson, who announced he's homosexual. And I, I prayed with her, and I just didn't know what to think about all this, and, and mm -hmm. I said, Jesus, you can deliver from any sin, yeah, but then can. you came. <laughs> yeah. in Pennsylvania and you are telling me your testimony and I was like wow Jesus you are actually bringing me this testimony of two women who are really wearing that sin and they're completely delivered and are helping others this is amazing so I just want this to be just hope for others to, to hear your testimony yes, I want Not this to, to be encouragement Yes. For those yeah. who are and suffering. It is. It's tough out there. It really is. I mean, because there's a lot of promotion the, the, for There's this promotion lifestyle. for it. You see that billboards is. for it. You see commercials for it. You see Songs shows for it. Movies. Cartoons. In you know, children's right. cartoons. You know, cartoons. Yes. Books yes. In the school, you right. know, and um, yeah, I mean, just it, the it, it's saturated. But even though it's saturated, for greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world, for he wrestles not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. But God has given us power and authority through the Holy Spirit and through Jesus Christ. So, you know, if there's a loved one, you know, stay faithful and pray, and we need to tell them the truth, and show them we need love. to tell them the truth in love. Right. Yeah. Love. You know, however, you can, however, I will say, I will say that, um, yeah, the encounters with, like, like street preacher Dave, you know, I was telling you, like, it honestly inspired, like, a hate for Christians in me. There was such hypocrisy because, you know, honestly, everybody thinks there's such terrible sins in homosexuality, which it is. But do you realize that many people in their heterosexual relationships do the same things that homosexuals do? Well, you know, you bring up a very good point, and I'm... And I think I, it's, it's, and, this and would I be the time to any, elaborate. I don't mean that in any defense of, no, of it. But I'm you're just, right. you know, in terms of the way that people really um, villainize it over other sins. Exactly. And, yes. and, and the thing is, and I have always believed this personally and everything, that any married couple, especially a man that would treat his wife in a way that is not becoming of a sister, mm -hmm. is doing the exact same act, a homosexual act, upon mm -hmm. his wife uh, right. or vice versa it's no different and I know some people they try to use well the bed is undefiled and you know all this is okay no it's not okay no. it's no, the exact same thing this wasn't this was not divinely intended <laughs> that's, no. that's yeah. exactly right you know no. I mean your wife is is your sister you know and if you're married and so for a married couple you know if you, you know some men think that well it's okay if you do some of these things you, no. can't, you can't condemn a homosexual community because you're doing the exact same thing. And what's the difference? Yep. It, like, so yeah. like you yeah. put, put it, it's the spirit of homosexuality, and that's exactly right. It, exactly. And what I don't think that people understand is that, you know, this idea that people have that, that Satan is this entity that's down in the Timeless. ground somewhere says in the Bible yeah. that the devil roameth the earth looking for whom he can devour it. That's so right. These spirits are out there, and they're and listen. Satan is actively, actively campaigning for your eternal destruction. Yours, Every, your everybody's, you know. Your family members. This is this is what's happening, and I don't think people understand that a demon of lust, you know, a a, a, a demon, a spirit, is without a body, it can do nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so a demon of lust needs a person to act that lust out in. A demon exactly. of, of alcoholism or addiction needs a body That's exactly to right. drink alcohol or to, to use drugs. A, a demon of, of, of adultery needs probably a Jezebel, a Jezebel a spirit or something. These, these things. ADHD. With Madison, she had ADHD. She was attention deficit disorder. On medication. And she was delivered from that and totally off medication off and medication. everything. I mean, and she has no problems. So when you look in the Bible, and I you mean, look at the word, ADHD. And you look in the Bible, and there's a couple of different words that are used for the word heal. One of them is is the Greek word sozos, and that word, if you look at the different definitions, only one of them kind of applies to heal. The one that really um, really jumped out at me was to deliver someone from the obstacles that block the reception of the messianic 
you know, salvation. So yeah. you look at that. So when you heal, what happens? Healing in the physical is salvation in the spiritual. Yeah. So, um, and these are just things that, like, that God is, like, I've been reading the Bible, and God said, heal, meditate, heal. What does that really mean? Go look at that. And so I go and look at it, and I'm seeing, huh, so when you heal, it, many times when you heal someone, they're saved, you know. So we look at these things, our people are, are suffering. There's a demon of suicide out there that is killing people in mass. Mass yes. numbers of spirit, of, whether it be a spirit of suicide out there that, that yeah, is doing it, and crazy. and we have people not doing what Jesus Christ told us to do, taking authority and saying, "Get out!" in in the name of Jesus Christ, get out. Um, that's what we've been. That's what you know. Jesus has been calling us to do, and he all I can say is that um, he he did a work in us, I guess, for a reason. You know, he saved he saved us for a purpose. You know. Um, and you also were put in the limelight of the world you lived in before, and because of that, your testimony is, uh, is going to have a reach very far. Uh, may bring people against you as well, because oh, when we put too. this that's out, happened we've too. had that. Yeah. We've been it. told that we were reprobates. We've been told all sorts of that we're eternally all sorts reprobates. Of stuff, you know, there's no repentance and, from that. And then people, yeah. you know, won't. Well, Hear our story or whatever, and they're like, "Really? You know? Well, yeah. Sometimes I go, really, but it really, <laughs> yeah." Listen, and that's well, what Jesus is beginning. Blasphemy yeah. was the yes. only Eddie. thing that there's no repentance for, and blasphemy is always yeah. yeah. Well, yes. I would hate to think of, you know, I knew that when, when he showed us and everything, that that this was it for uh, for me. I felt that this was it that I needed to choose this thing whom you shall serve. Yeah, I, knew, I knew that too. I that, knew. that was clear with the And Jews. I knew my heart was already there. But afterwards I thought, oh my gosh, you know, if I, you know, I just felt like if I had not made that choice that um, I would have been even more deceived than I have been before because I would have been even more blinded to everything. Well, let me just and say, after my dreams, there's no way I could have not because, like, that was, like, I yeah. pretty much knew that I was had a one-way ticket to, to um, truly pretty much hell with that dream. He That's answered us. He answered me. us by clarity, clear, and he answered our prayers by telling her <laughs> and telling me, and too. And you put it off on her, too, because you oh, said I to did. the Lord in prayer, I did. tell her. I did. I said <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I, I tell am, someone that I mean, really. I and, and I will say, too, I like, that, like, it was, I mean, it's no small thing. I mean, could you imagine if... Yeah, the person you thought you loved, you're like, you know, no, I'm just not going to marry. Now, this yeah. is nothing now. I mean, and honestly, after being delivered, we don't understand the mindset that we had the same way anymore because we are truly changed. I can tell you that I used to have a problem with swearing. And since I've been, since I've been saved and, and I was baptized, I, I, I would always try in the flesh not to. Couldn't do it. Yeah. I, like now... I, the thought, honestly, the thought of doing something that I think that, the, and I'm not perfect, and I and I do mess up, but let me tell you, I, I'm really, I'm really hard on myself when I do because I, I know there's God. I mean, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know there's a God, and I know, I know that we're going to be judged, and I know that I have forgiveness, and I and I have grace through the blood, but it's not that. It's just that. Um, well, you're transforming to use it, right? I feel oh, absolutely. It. it's, it's hear, painful to know that I've, I've disappeared. Dis I don't even know. It's, On a it's, daily it's painful. Basis. It's personally painful. On a daily basis, we hear his voice and we just do whatever it is, you know. Every single day. He, he has us do. And there's times when, you know, we have people over at the house or whatever, and it's like the Holy Spirit will tell me, you know, I have things to go do or whatever, and he'll just say, well, just wait, you know, just just wait, you know, and next thing I know, we're praying for, for somebody, and they're just breaking down and crying, and and being delivered, and repentance is happening, and next thing we know, we're baptizing them, and I mean, just the Holy Spirit really moves, moves in our home, and, you know, we're 
in our have. home and and just for everybody yes we still do have a home together but um and i'm sure there's going to be people saying all oh, they're lying and you know what you can say that because i have no control over what anybody chooses, chooses to believe yeah. yes yeah. and we, but we have our house totally we different. open our house up and we disciple people we have people come in and stay with us that are are looking for you know healing or deliverance or, or repentance or um that god is really calling out so we have people come and come and stay with us we've had you know several different people and we actually have a family staying with us right now um you know, Sandra. And so you Ruth. guys having an outreach ministry, yeah. how would people contact you if they are going through this? Or is this something you've ever considered before no. as Perhaps far you as can a family pray for that's... their family members as well? Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess if they, um, I guess for right now, if they want to contact you guys or whatever, and, you, and they okay. and, 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 then can, and then we can them. figure out maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe yeah, something. Sure. They yes. maybe could leave their number with you and stuff like that, okay. or contact email yes, sure. or something sure. like that. We would so well, more you, than you guys happy. can email us, Israeli News Live at gmail.com. Just email us if you have a question for our sisters here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got someone that you, a loved one, a family member, or something like that that you have been praying for, is going through this type of struggle and we'll get the message yeah i just want to i just want to say that to the people out there that that there is hope <laughs> and our hope we relies on jesus christ as our lord and savior and there is hope so you know that was very refreshing to hear your testimony valerie cassie thank you so much yes. um because there is so many people writing mm -hmm. us with that problem right now and it was kind of distressing to even read how many people suffer. Can I also say that like in terms of it, you know, yes, pray for people because we know our prayers, you know, prayers are, this, are going to be the incense, you know, up in, up in heaven, right. these prayers. So, um, you know, pray for people, but also understand that when we go out and we walk out there and we are walking in the love of Christ and talking about the, about Jesus Christ and talking about the gospel of salvation to people that this is what starts getting people like asking questions that you can't you suggest have to plant the same. you can't suggest that they will ask that just by being you know one of the things that we've been convicted by the Holy Spirit about is like, why are we more afraid of of man than we are of God? Yes, we're so afraid of saying of of asking someone, "Hey, do you know? Do you know Jesus? You know, you know what's your what's your walk with Jesus? Let me tell you what mine's what mine's like. You know, we're worried about what someone's going to think or say. Yeah, why aren't That's we true. worried about imagine, the fact that we've yeah. we've been commanded by our Lord and Savior that we're supposed to? You know what? We're not saved by works. We're saved by by grace through faith. But fruit, right? That's right. Fruit. The thing is, is if you've truly if you've truly changed, that change is going is going to manifest some type of fruit. And the thing about us is, um, like, I can't stop talking about Jesus, Jesus <laughs> or what He's done done for That's you know, true. I get up every you know we both get up we get every excited. day we we I I have such a, a hunger for the word of God and, and the Bible um uh yeah. worshiping and Just praying like um two three four o'clock in the morning <laughs> I you know, it, I mean, it's different it is different for someone who never even had a thought of about God yeah. or what he thought about anything that I that I did it's like every day is like I don't have to make time. Like, I don't have to have a Sabbath. Every day's like that. Every day's your Sabbath. For me. Do you know what? <laughs> well, I mean, all I can say so, is that no, I, I want to be close to God so much that, like, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be with Him. I want to be in His Word. I want to be delivering, helping somebody get delivered or, or, or sharing, you know, sharing what, sharing Jesus with somebody or talking or doing a Bible study with them. It, it's like, it's, it's different. Life we, isn't the we, same. We anymore. like we we love doing discipleship with people. We like to talk to people about this and everything, and we want to offer um, hope and let them know that you know and that's true why I brought you Jesus on, Christ. even yeah. though it's so controversial and, so, and people yeah. are sometimes shying away yeah. and they don't and even if don't believe that even it's if possible it's a to be distressed honored. brother sister mom dad 
grandparents, whoever it is, or if it's that individual um, that, you know, wants help or whatever, even breaking loose out of a relationship, thinking that other person, you know, we'd be more than willing to, uh, you know, contact them, talk to them, you know, pray with and them. pray, pray with, them. with them. That's and, wonderful. Um, because, you know, there, there is true deliverance through Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Well, thank you, Valerie. Thank you. thank you, Kathy. It was a pleasure to meet you. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having us on and sharing the message. We are excited yes. by your testimony. And I hope that it will help somebody who struggles in that area. Yes. Look forward thank to you. Good, more, more good reports. Yes. yes.